Welcome to another informational video on Handsphere 4.0. Each of my videos will start with this same short section on what is Handsphere 4.0. Well, as a Handsphere 4.0 user and a licensed amateur radio operator, I look at it this way. Handsphere 4.0 is to ham radio what an advanced flight simulator is to flying. It's a simulation, but it's an incredibly realistic simulation. Handsphere 4.0 includes simulations of how the sunspots affect the ionosphere using current real sunspot numbers. It, it simulates the multiple paths that signals take through the atmosphere, getting from one location to another. And it even simulates the behavior of different types of antennas. You use all of these things in Handsphere 4.0 as you experienced an incredibly realistic simulation of ham radio. This video is about some more of the optional plugins that you could get from the shop to just uh, make your, your Handsphere transceiver just like you want it. Um, I think there's going to be a never-ending supply of new plugins in the shop as Kelly and other developers develop more of them. and. Uh, as I have said in every video up until now, you, you don't even need to ever go to the shop. If uh, the free transceiver that comes with 4.0 that's included for free with your 3.0 hands for subscription, it has everything you need. So this, what I have here is a mixture of uh, things from the default transceiver and things that I have gotten from the shop, including this skin that I'm using, which is called brushed aluminum. The default skin is light aluminum, looks like this, it's very cool, but uh, some of the things I want to show today I just thought looked better on the brushed aluminum skin. Uh, what I want to show today uh, are a mixture of plugins that are just completely for fun and ones that uh, definitely have some benefit for your operation. Um, the fun, for fun ones are uh, the small and large custom nameplate. I'll talk about those and do an example of those here in the editor. Then uh, the ones that are uh, probably more uh, useful are uh, the waterfall display, which is a uh, complement to the uh, normal band scope that's included with the default transceiver. I'll show that once I'm uh, once I'm out of the editor mode. The oscilloscope which I'll, I'll show, show uh, once I'm out of the editor mode. And um, the microphone recorder, which is a fantastic plugin, not only for allowing you to uh, record CQ messages or uh, contest messages um, and play them with the push of the button to save your voice, but also it allows you to check your own audio. And I'll show that once we're out of the editor. What I want to start with is the um, custom nameplate and the new small custom nameplate that just showed up in the shop today. Uh, this one here shows an example of something you might find on a real radio. It's just a, a brand name, um, you know, a, a, a description and a model number. Now this small one, it's showing off a new feature that appears in both the large and small custom nameplate and that is the ability to set the receive and transmit colors to different different colors. So on this one I have the receive color set to the gray and the transmit color set to red. So that's why when I transmit it lights up uh, bright red like that for a, a, you know if you wanted it to say on the air. <clears throat> These uh, custom nameplates give you complete control over the the message that you want it to say, the font that you use that you do it with. It allows you to turn a shadow on and off like so. Um, it allows you to set the color and if you if you never select a transmit color then the receive and transmit colors will always be the same so that you can just make a, a static uh, plate that doesn't change color um, but then let's say you decide you want to experiment with uh, a, a different transmit color like maybe I think well what would happen if my model plate here uh, lit up red when I transmit it and I do an experiment like that and then I decide, no, <laughs> that was kind of dumb. There's just this button here that says TX equals RX, and once you do that, it sets the receive and transmit colors to the same. And that time, now when you transmit, it doesn't, um, it doesn't light up. And uh, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to put in equal signs uh, that uh, look like uh, air vents 
So now I've got uh, all three of the smaller custom nameplates in place with these uh, what looks like air vents in them. And, uh, you know, that's kind of fun. Uh, but I took it one silly step further than that. Um, I used to have a uh, tube based, vacuum tube based uh, transceiver that would get quite uh, hot when I was transmitting and the finals, the tubes in the finals would actually glow red and I don't mean just the filaments, I mean the tube would glow red and uh, the uh, finals were located on the left hand side of my uh, transceiver and so what I've done here is I've used this ability to set a separate transmit color and I have selected a color for these uh, air vents to light up as if there's glowing tubes inside but I wanted it to look like the tubes were on this side of the transceiver so I wanted it to fade as it moved across the transceiver so I used the fact that um, you have complete control over the colors and now uh, when I transmit you'll see that uh, that uh, this side of the rig lights up bright red through the air vents and then a little bit fainter and then almost black with just a hint of red as you get farther from my uh, from the finals yeah, the tubes in my finals so that's just just complete silliness uh, that I wanted to uh, share as an example of something you could do okay now here we are in the transceiver actually running uh, receiving at the moment and uh, and now I want to show the waterfall, the oscilloscope, and the voice recorder. The waterfall is a complement to the band scope that comes with the normal rig. The band scope will show you signals at, in uh, in real time as spikes, and uh, you can see that uh, this these uh, CW beacons down here are just popping up above the noise. Um, one of these beacons is in Costa Rica. It's quite strong, and if I uh, point this. Uh, three element Yagi that direction it will really pick up that signal and you can see it coming way up out of the noise now you can also see it on the waterfall which shows the signal in the past and the signal that's currently happening uh, and so if a signal just popped up on the band briefly over here and I might miss it it would show up as a signal on the waterfall and it would move down with time the other thing you can see here is the oscilloscope is displaying this CW as it comes in and as it gets stronger and weaker the uh, the signal gets uh, stronger and weaker and you can use this to kind of uh, monitor the uh, quality of the incoming audio and decide uh, if you need to uh, uh, perhaps ask the uh, transmitting station to turn down their microphone gain or something so this is a nice example of the oscilloscope and it works for receiving voice signals too um, now the uh, big advantage to the waterfall, there's two of them. One is that, like I said, if a signal popped up and you missed it, you would see it moving down the waterfall here so you could know that something happened uh, just a, a few seconds ago. The other is it's very, very good at picking up weak signals. I have my Yagi pointed right at this beacon in Costa Rica. If I turn it uh, 90 degrees away from that so that the signal is off the side of this directional antenna, it will fade out. It will get quite weak because uh, um, these uh, directional antennas like this have quite a null off of the side of them and uh, the uh, signals that are off the side are, are hardly detectable. And so now if you can still hear it but the signal is so weak that the uh, band scope is barely showing a spike. If you watch right there you can see it just barely coming up out of the noise but notice that it's still showing up as this raggedy little signal here in the um, in the waterfall. So that's one of the key uh, advantages of the waterfall is you can see the very weak signals and then um, um, you know you can go and listen and see if they're if you can copy them well enough to make a contact. So that's the waterfall and the oscilloscope the other thing I wanted to show was the uh, microphone, what's called the microphone recorder. And its main purpose is to allow you to record uh, CQ messages or you know CQ contest or CQDX or whatever so that you don't have to say them over and over again with your voice. So I've recorded a couple of messages here. For instance, here's my generic CQ message. Um, and if I have the voice recorder in the R mode, which just means I'm I'm just receiving, I'm not trying to transmit, and I hit play. Hello, CQ, CQ, CQ. 
you. This is Whiskey Bravo 7 Echo Charlie Whiskey WB7 E. So that's that is the message that I recorded and uh, you could see it on the oscilloscope too as it was playing. Um, and so the way you use this voice recorder is let's say I wanted to record a, a CQ contest uh, uh, message to be played during a contest over and over again is you hold down the record button with your mouse and then you record your message and the added benefit here is that it kind of lets you know how how good your audio is so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna have my microphone turned up way too far um, and I'm gonna record a message because I don't I'm I'm not noticing that my needles going way up past the green so let me just do this I'm gonna hold down the record button Hello CQ Contest, CQ Contest. This is Whiskey Bravo 7, Echo Charlie Whiskey. And so I may think, hey, that's great. You know, uh, I've just, I've got this message. I can play it over and over. But again, I had my mic level turned up way too far on purpose. Now, when I play back this clip with the, uh, with the voice recorder in the R mode so that it's not actually transmitting, listen to what uh, it sounds like. Hello CQ Contest, CQ Contest. This is Whiskey Bravo 7, Echo Charlie Whiskey. Clearly distorted and overdriven. So um, that shows me that I had my mic level too high, which I may not have known, known if I didn't listen to my own message here on the voice recorder. Now what I can do is I can double click on this recorded clip. I could rename it if I wanted to keep it, like I could call it uh, CQ uh, Contest like so but since it is such a bad recording I'm gonna double click on it and say delete instead now the question is though how do you actually use it I have this recorded CQ and since I'm recording making a video here and I don't want to get an answer to my CQ I'm gonna leave my power all the way down but I'm gonna set my mic up here a little ways and um, I'm gonna now put the recorder in the T mode which means when I play I want you to transmit so it's transmitting my message. Uh, you can see uh, moving my uh, my uh, mic level up. The S meter plus LEDs are lighting. In fact, I'm going to turn it up a little bit farther so it lights uh, two LEDs. And uh, I'm clearly transmitting. You can see the light up call sign is lit up. But then when I get done with my message, it automatically stops transmitting and puts me back into receive mode. And uh, if I don't get an answer to my CQ, then I just hit play again. And now it's doing it again. It's transmitting it again. And if something, for some reason, you wanted to interrupt it, like you were, you were thinking, oh, wait, I think I started transmitting when someone's responding, then you just hit the button again, and it stops it. Um, it interrupts it and puts you back into receive mode. So that's, uh, that's it. These are the... Like I said, again, totally optional. Uh, uh, some some of the totally optional plugins, the custom nameplates, the uh, waterfall, the oscilloscope, and the voice recorder, in addition to some of the other ones I have on here that I showed in the previous video, and the uh, custom skin, which is this brushed aluminum skin. Again, you don't need any of these. The, uh, the default transceiver has everything you need to make contacts. Uh, and if you watch the first videos in this series, it shows you all the tools that come with the default transceiver that you need to help you find signals and make contacts.